What is the one area that customers ask the most about Data Services Cloud Console or DSCC? The answer is security. So today, let's talk about security inner workings of DSCC. Let's first take a look at just how secure is DSCC environment itself, and then we can dive into network security. For identity and access management, DSCC actually uses the HPE OnePass service, which is integrated across the board for many other HPE services. Think of it like going to the office. Identity management would be like the front desk who controls who can come into the building and if they are who they say they are. And to sign in, HPE OnePass provides multi-factor authentication or MFA. Users have to use more than one way to identify themselves. MFA uses a time-based one-time passcode or push mechanism to a secondary device, which makes it much less vulnerable than a named password scheme. Additionally, you can integrate single sign-on, in which case you can use your own organization's authentication system for DSCC. Then the second piece of the puzzle is access management. To use the same analogy, it's like managing the permissions to enter different areas inside of your office building, such as giving an engineer permissions to use a lab or giving a visitor only the permissions to view the lab without having the access to change things around in the lab. DSCC relies on roles and assignments. We provide multiple DSCC instances for regions all around the globe. As you receive your device, you can assign it to an instance. Within that DSCC instance, each user is given a role. And the role has explicit permissions to different tasks or scopes. For example, my account could be assigned with a role that has create permissions to volumes, but only read permissions to hosts. This gives you the power to manage the access to be as granular and restrictive as you need. And if those security features haven't secured your attention yet, you'll want to hear about dual authorization. This feature can be enabled for users to submit operations that requires a second user to approve or deny it. Without the approval within a time limit, the pending operations will expire and thus canceled automatically. The dual auth will help you protect your data against notorious ransomware attacks and insider attacks. Now that we talked about the DSCC environment itself, let's shift our focus to network security for a moment. First of all, all devices need to go through an onboarding process with DSCC at the beginning. Here's how that process works. When your device is shipped to you, it comes with a set of unique signed certificates already installed during the manufacturing process. Then the device will use those certs to initialize a connection to a predefined URL through a standard outbound port for HTTPS. A stringent validation process is then triggered. Once validated, your device will be given a DSCC instance name to connect to. After another round of validation with that particular DSCC instance, both sides will list each other as trusted. After that, only this device can establish a bi-directional tunnel connection to that DSCC instance for all communications. A tunnel connection can only be initialized from the on-prem devices. It will never start from DSCC. This means your firewall rule can just allow the outbound traffic on only one port for only one domain. One more thing to mention here is that your data written on the volumes will never be sent to DSCC. The only thing going across the wire is management data. It is sent on a periodic basis in the range of minutes with sizes in the range of megabytes. If you're curious to learn more about DSCC security, please check out the technical white paper on DSCC security guide. Thank you for watching. Thank you.